Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to continue with Blend SMD drive where we're going to set up the drive to run in a remote mode using a uh, potentiometer and two three wire controls and if you haven't seen the last video where we commissioned the drive and run it in semi-local mode uh, that video is going to be in description below and also all the related videos that I think it could assist you in uh, any way uh, also going to be there plus the manuals and uh, part numbers and things like that as well so uh, before we get started all the items you see that we are um, reviewing on this channel uh, most of them can be found on our ebay page i do not restock them so once they're gone they're gone so uh, if you're looking for one and uh, can't find one on, on our uh, uh, ebay page or on our website it's uh, we don't longer stock them so unfortunately it will be gone but then we have many many more other different automation goods with have quite a very discounted prices so definitely check it out the website or the ebay page both links are going to be in description below and also if you are selling get in touch if you want to sell vlog your stuff and things like that get in touch and we'll come back to you with some sort of offer within 24 hours so without further ado let's get started <music> Alrighty, so now that the wiring is done, let's talk about how it is all set up in here. And we've done a little bit different than we did in the previous video, because this time I'm going to be using a e-stop to uh, rather than just uh, stop the power going to the terminal 28, I will send a uh, request to the drive to quickly stop the drive. So, and to do that, we need to change a parameter. But first. Let's have a look at the wiring. The wiring is done like this. Uh, in the back of in here, ooh, zoom in, yeah. So you can see that I got normally one, one is normally open contact, one is normally closed. And here in the back of the normally open contact is a, a terminal 20 coming in here and sending the power to normally close and normally open contact. From there on, the selector switch sends the power to terminal 28, but uh, normally closed contact goes back to terminal E1. And we're going to be programming the E1 to a do quick stop. And to, as you said that before in the last video, the E1, E2, and E3 can be programmed. Also the relay as well, but not for now. And we are going to be using an option, as you can see now, it's called quick stop. So control the acceleration to stand still, activate low. So uh, basically, what it's going to do, you need the permanent source of power from terminal 20. This is exactly what we're doing in here, achieving that by sending the power to normally close contact. And in a case the system will be broken like that, it will show error. And to release it, you need to uh, sort of uh, flip the switch in and flip it back out. So just in case you've done that in a non-active uh, state, but if it's in an active state, it will, uh, it will do that. So it will error it, and when you release it, it will not release it, but as soon as you remove the button from the uh, enable, he will reset the error automatically. And then we have a uh, potentiometer also as well. Potentiometer is from, ooh, here we go. It's the Siemens potentiometer, 22 mil cutout. Uh, potentiometer is from one kilo ohm to 10 kilo ohm. So there's a wide range of choices you have. You don't have to stick like specifically to one. As long as it's within that range, your potentiometer should work. And as you remember in the last video, we changed one of the parameters, which were uh, not allowing us to, uh, which allowed us to change this uh, frequency with these buttons in here. So we need to go to C1. Oh, I went the wrong way. If you go and C1, we need to select that to zero. So into that when we select that zero, that pretty much says now the potentiometer has been read from uh, the from the from uh, from uh, terminal input seven, eight, and nine. And let's start up and see how that works. So now that we've done that by pushing select switch forwards, here we go. The system is live, and you can control your speed with potentiometer now so it's quite straightforward so uh and let's demonstrate it again the e-stop it's a good way of stopping the drive so i do suggest to do when you're wiring a two-wire control uh go this method which is completely uh kills the drive and 
off it and the drive being reset and pretty much is ready to go again so uh, that it will be all about a uh, two-way control let's get to three-way control and for the three-way control ladies and gentlemen this is where we will need to get a little bit creative and let me run you through what we've got in here so far uh, we are going to be using a uh, digital output to sort of allow us to start the drive and stop the uh, keep the drive running uh, from the point of uh, uh, three wire control so uh, but as a, as a standing thing inside the drive itself there is no way of sort of create uh, programming in the three wire control as it stands from into uh, CE configurable uh, um, inputs in here so we can't do that so we have to sort of a uh, Compromise. There's a couple of ways you can go. You can go and use a similar system to this outside uh, the away from the drive and have a um, uh, some sort of a relay on the back. But drive has got output relay, so we can use that. The only thing you are ending up losing in this uh, setup is uh, you are not you are, you lose your deacceleration. So you still your acceleration is still there, but the acceleration will sort of disappear because it will as soon as it will drop the you press the stop button, it will close uh, the open up the uh, digital output, and uh, power no longer is going to go to a uh, digital input 28, and the drive will stop. But I haven't said that. Let's get to the wiring. So. Uh, when it comes to the wiring, we still have our potentiometer, which is wired in the 789. And the back of the back of the uh, our control station, which looks like that now. And we've got our e-stop still there, start and stop button. What we got in here, we still kept uh, what we did before, where on uh, on the uh, e-stop and, uh, and enable. So we have a two number wire number two cable in here, which comes from uh, output twenty, which is our source. And then it sort of provides the power to all other other switches in here. And past past the stop signal in here, that one goes to actually K fourteen, and then uh, and after K fourteen, which is a cable number three, cable number three comes back to comes back to a start signal. So sort of that's where you create your. Oh, that's where you create your latched system. So every time you you are going to show that how to program that in a minute. Uh, and on, on, on uh, default, the K14 uh, and K12 is closed. So uh, you will need to create some sort of uh, open contact in there, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And uh, where were we? And yeah, and uh, e-stop it obviously goes back to where, where where it was before for E1, which has been pre-programmed to. Uh, accept a quick stop so uh, to change the what we need for the latching system if you go and if you look at the uh, paperwork in here c08 is a relay output and you can tell you it tells you in here relay is energized if ready fault motor is running and blah 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 so you can sort of see what options you can have the one i'm going for not the fault but I want to go for motor is running. That will give me normally open contact in there. So, uh, so uh, I'm going to be using that. And to do that, again, we will go into the C8. And you need to change that to 2. So once you've done that, there's a couple of things, other things I want to talk about, which are completely uh, disregarded in, in, in uh, this video is... You, you, the E1 and E2, you still can pre-program those things to do something else. So, uh, especially the direction of rotation. So, uh, if you want to, to, to have that for direction of rotation, uh, you can still program that in E2. Or any other things you can see in here that would, uh, you can have three preset and uh, no action whatsoever. And uh, on a CE3, there's even more. You can, you can, I think there's even more options in here you can choose. So... Uh, that, uh, having said that, it says I'm not using directional system because of my small station in here. It's sort of uh, one alignment because I will need to get better stations. But if you do want the direction as well for the three wire control, uh, you can add another switch, uh, program it into E2, which we already show you how to do that. So how that works now is when, I, when we click start, the drive it goes on and it's been held on now by the K1, K14 and K12. 
So when I, when I click the stop, it will remove the power like we like would normally remove it from the relay and it will stop the drive. So that's how pretty much it works. It, it just works as a normal standalone relay, which is pretty good. And it's sort of integrated within drive and you can change those states by programming whatever you want, you want the, that uh, output relay to do. So, uh, and obviously we still have our e-stop. And in this case, when you click the e-stop and release that, it will not reset that. You still need to click that start button to reset it and the drive is pretty much ready to go so uh, that will be it i think when it comes down to uh, two wire and three wire control plus potentiometer and uh, hopefully a lot of this makes sense to you and it gives you some ideas how you want the drive to be controlled so uh if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and if you like the video please smash that like and if you dislike it smash that dislike and uh, leave, a, leave a comment below what you like about it, what you don't like about it, because uh, constructive criticism definitely helps me out to make a better videos. So other than that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.